Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this is the weekly chart of silver and oil overlaid against each other. And a couple of things stand out here. Um, the first one is that uh, the timing of the tops. This is the Bear Stearns top in silver in 2008, about 21 bucks. And you can see that that uh, preceded the top in oil by about one, two, three, three months or so. And then of course, both of them going down together led us into the financial crisis. Um, then they both kind of bottomed together and we got the huge run up in silver. So remember that the, the big run in silver, uh, as opposed to oil, um, the big run up in silver was after the QE2 response to the financial crisis. Oil had already run up before the financial crisis. After the money printing happened, silver ran up to that $50 top. And then silver topped and has, you can see, gone down ever since. Now, the interesting thing here is that oil kind of topped in the sense that it made a flat top here. It kind of flatlined, but only just recently has it begun its decline. And now uh, it, it had to run from about $107 all the way down to that $45 price. And you can see now we're plumbing the new lows here with we're about $43.50 on oil. Um, so that's, you know, what is that telling us? I don't know. Is there anything um, about uh, how long it took to go from silver topping and falling down for oil to follow it? You can see... Um, if that's any kind of indicator of how big the next financial crisis is going to be, will it be magnitudes bigger? I just don't know. Um, can they both crash from here? I suppose they could. What would the world look like in that situation? Um, I don't know. If you listen to Andy Hoffman, he's been talking lately about the commodities crash, and there certainly has been one with the oil from Iran coming online, maybe we'll, we will actually get new lows. Uh, I think he's saying sub $30 oil. That's going to be very strange. That's going to mean I would think would be complete bankruptcy for um, all of the shale oil business and uh, probably just about any other alternative uh, fuel business probably would go bankrupt if we got sustained, certainly if we got sustained sub $30 prices on oil. Uh, would silver disconnect at some point? We don't know. It's just interesting to think about. Now, I wanted to look at this Provident Metal story. This was reported on the News Doctors. It's also on Dave Kranzler uh, Investment Research Dynamics. And uh, this, I, I don't really want to go with the term default here because it's not really what I consider to be a default. It's, it's kind of more like a mistake. But w when we get into looking at about AG and Tolving and what happened in that situation, uh, we'll talk about those issues. But let's look at what happened here. So uh, he says, a good friend of mine scraped together $150 and sent a check to Provident Metals in order to buy one of the Royal Canadian Mint 10 ounce bars they were advertising as being in stock. Now this is one that I don't really track because I, as you know, I don't buy bars. I'm not interested in bars. Um, if you're in the school of trying to get as much silver for your money, then um, I suppose you might want to buy bars. Uh, I don't know why you'd buy Royal Canadian Mint bars. You could probably get other bars cheaper. If that's your strategy and philosophy, why wouldn't you want to get the cheapest bar? And then that gets into you know them being genuine, and that gets into the reputation of the mint, and then that gets right back to why you don't want the cheapest. So, But we're not going to go down that road here. So uh, he used Provident for the first time ever because they advertised the lowest premium on this bar. He was told by Provident that he had to wait until his check cleared and then wait another five days before they would process his order. I can understand the first requirement, but I knew something didn't smell right when he told me the second condition. So up to this point, they've had his money for about 10 days, not processed his order or sent him an update. Now this 10 day, having the money for 10 days on a check, um, again, that's not really something that I would get too worried about, but this is a red flag 
of them having the money because again when we look at tolving we'll see how that can turn into um, kind of running this not a Ponzi scheme but kind of running this delay and pay and uh, it, it can be a sign of someone's in trouble I personally don't think that's the case with Provident I've done a lot of business with them but it may be we have to watch for the signs and we'll get to that today ironically one day after he told me the above story he gets this email note from Provident and this is the email they sent the Royal Canadian Mint has suspended RCM 10 ounce silver bar sales indefinitely Due to a sudden surge in demand for RCM products, there has been an unforeseen production and allocation error by the Royal Canadian Mint. We will not be receiving our shipment of RCM 10 ounce silver bars. Now, let's read closely here. They're saying there is an unforeseen production and allocation error by the Royal Canadian Mint. So the first thing they're doing is they're telling you that they were in allocation already. That means that each of the buyers has a certain amount that they can buy. Probably what happened, my guess is, is that the Royal Canadian Mint changed the allocation on the fly and Provident Metals was caught off guard. Provident Metals was probably shipping, I'm sorry, Provident Metals was probably selling them uh, without having them yet, but based on a promise that they would get them. And probably, my guess is, from the past, they had always gotten their allocation, so they had no reason to think that they wouldn't. But you can see how this can be a dangerous and subtle trap, because things can change. We will not be receiving our shipment of 10-ounce silver bars, RCM. This is coupled with an internal inventory discrepancy has affected a few of our customer orders. Now, that's interesting. They're not telling us exactly what that is. But did they think they have more silver than they really did? We have been working diligently each day to secure RCM bars through various sources for our customers at any cost. Unfortunately, we were unable to fulfill some orders, including yours. Now, that doesn't have the ring of truth for me. Certainly, to restore trust, what I would do is go out, you know, if I had to go on eBay even, I would at least try to source them somewhere and uh, I'd ship them to the customers and for the delay I'd give them a 10% discount or something. Anything to keep trust going because that's uh, one of the worst things you could possibly do in this business is lose trust. We're committed to each customer and we'd like to discuss how uh, this dilemma, etc. Dave says, I highlighted the section in red and underlined it for point of emphasis. That is a pile of BS that Provident has served up for people who prepaid for these bars. They took the money in, pre-sold bars, did not have an inventory after representing that they did have them in inventory. While this part of the story is extremely interesting, everyone needs to be careful about sending the money to any online bullion dealer, especially after the collapse of Tolving and the very recent collapse of Bullion Direct. The more interesting part of this story is RCM's suspension of production and sales of the 10 ounce bar. Why has the Royal Canadian Mint suspended production of a silver product that has a lot of demand, but they have not suspended production yet of the silver maple leaves. Because suspension of the 10 ounce bar doesn't make news, but suspension of the one ounce maple leaf does make news. They stop the bars because they can't get a hold of enough refined silver to make both. Now that's very interesting because when we have the stoppage with the Silver Eagle, what we always are told is there's a shortage of blanks. Now that certainly can't be the case unless they're there are 10 ounce blanks that they use as well uh, but certainly they're not one ounce coin blanks so this is something different more likely it's pointing to a general shortage there were no news announcements like there would have been if rcm had suspended sales of maple leafs the only reason i knew about this is because provident defaulted on delivering the bars to prepaid customers now i would have to disagree with that you saw in the last video i covered the news stories about when the Silver Eagles were suspended, it wasn't covered either. It, it Maybe he's referring to not being covered in the alternative media as well as the mainstream media, but the mainstream media never covers these stories. This gets to a more serious issue. At some point, there's going to be a severe shortage of available silver in all forms. Now, I agree with that. Bill Murphy's source in London is right when he warned about rumors circulating around LBMA traders that there was going to be a serious serious shortage of silver at refiners this fall. Retail demand is starting to go parabolic. Atmex today sold 100,000 silver eagles in five hours. Now, one of the commenters below mentioned that that was because Atmex did a sale and uh, they did, uh, I think it was $3 over spot 
for any random year. But still, $3 over spot and selling 100,000 eagles, that's pretty impressive. My bet is the U.S. and Canadian governments have directed their mints to do whatever is necessary to keep producing silver eagles and silver maple leaves, but they will not be able to continue the wave of demand for gold and silver at the retail level. Bullion coin sales soared for a second month in a row. U.S. mint figures for July show with American gold eagles at the highest in two and a quarter years and American silver eagles the best since January, despite nearly a three-week suspension in sales. That's from coinnews.net. Not only that, but India's demand for gold, and it goes into the comments. I encourage you to read all the comments and everything else. So I want to zero in on this issue of what Provident did there and how they handled that. Certainly not, uh, wasn't handled in the best way. Um, if I had done that, the letter, and I'm assuming the facts here, so bear that in mind, assuming the what I think are the facts are the facts, if... I would have been running that operation and had to send out an email regarding it. What I would have said was that we made a mistake and the mistake we made was uh, sh selling things that we didn't have in stock. The reason we did it was because we have never seen an issue with our allocation numbers from the RCM in the past. Uh, we have corrected that. We will no longer sell anything that we do not have physically in stock. We apologize. This may cause further delays, but we have to do this to protect our business. That's the type of letter that I would have sent out. And plus, including, uh, we will get these to you with a 10% discount and refund. So I, they didn't play that right. Now, let's go over real quick here and look at Gainesville. This is Gainesville coins. I didn't find the 10 ounce. Maybe it's on air. I just missed it. But here's the 100 ounce. Uh, available now for 85 cents over spot. That's pretty good. So you can see you can get a 100 ounce bar RCM for $1,569. It's 90 cents, so $1,570. Um, but you can see here that there is this disclaimer. This item will begin shipping on 8-19-2015. Orders containing this item will not ship until this item is available. Now you have to check mark that. I acknowledge the shipping delay. Once you do that, you can view the items. And you can see here, they allow 22 items. So I'm allowed to buy 22 of those. My guess is that they're saying, sorry, that's the cat. Uh, my guess is that they're expecting a shipment on the 19th of August for these 22 bars. And they're selling them before they've gotten them but they're letting people know ahead of time that, uh, that that's exactly what they're doing. That, in my opinion, is what Provident needs to do, make it very, very clear that that's what they're gonna do, and uh, just do that from now on, admit that they made a mistake, and just, because uh, like I said, it's been a stand-up operation as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I've never had a problem with them. Of course, I always pay credit card or, or bank wire. I never pay by check, just because that's a pain. But uh, I've never had a problem with them. I've ordered a number of things. I use them, Jam Bullion, Atmex, and Gainesville Coins. And I want to take you over again to about AG. And I want to take a look at the timeline with Tolving. This is a great site to peruse. This guy followed the Tolving story. Um, I encourage you to read this article, Tolving Post Postmortem. And he gives a summary here. He, he gives... Uh, you know the history of the collapse uh, he gives his theory of what happened and you know I don't really want to get into speculating there's a lot of things that could have happened um, but the main thing I wanted to look at is the timeline because there's some things that jump out when you look at the timeline here uh, especially with the the tops and the gold and the silver markets and you have to think about how these companies protect themselves through hedging. Now, I've mentioned before many, many times uh, how important I thought it was with the bankruptcy of MF Global because when you put this type of risk in there of uh, the futures and options ability to offset the risk, and then those being another risk, you know, what are you going to do? Are you going to take an insurance contract out from somebody uh, in case your futures broker goes bankrupt and then that insurance pays off? So, how far does it go? All this counterparty risk. So the big issue, if you're a 
person in business like Tolving or Provident or any of these others, how are you going to offset your market risk? Because you're taking an inventory which could dramatically drop in value, you could take a big loss. And uh, so somehow that is probably what happened to Tolving, although I don't know the exact, uh, the exact facts. I think it's just speculation. But let's read the timeline and see what jumps out as out at us. So it started off in October 25th, 1990. Hannes Tolving incorporates a Tolving company. In, uh, then he registered the domain in 95 uh, and then started selling. Now, I have uh, personally purchased from him before. This is way early on this. Uh, uh, I think it was before 2005, actually. He says he, has a stroke. he had a stroke there. Uh, he starts borrowing money from Amark using coins as collateral. In 2009, he claimed $285 million in sales. Uh, then he moved. Uh, in February 2010, he claimed his best sales day of $5.3 million. Uh, he took out a, a one-year shipping insurance policy. Uh, this is about him buying a car. I don't think that means anything either way. 2010, he had sales of $370 million. Uh, he apparently moved to Costa Mesa. Uh, he claims $150 million in sales for the first quarter of 2011. Now remember, 2011 was the year that silver topped. First delivery delay, March 2011. First delivery delay complaint surface. One took six weeks to receive. So that's important to think about. Delivery delay. That's the first thing that happened. Uh, there was a complaint about a delivery delay. Um, then he takes out an insurance policy. Uh, he reports that 600,000 ounces of silver in stock worth about $25 million. Now, think about that. Um, did he have 600,000 ounces in stock when it was 48 bucks because it had been cut in half by the time of this? So did he have 50 million and lost 25 million? We don't know. Um, he claims $83 million in sales for August. Gold peaked then in September and dropped to 16 13 15% drop in over three weeks. He claims $13 million of sales in one day. And then the author says, I believe Tolving started selling down his inventory likely to pay off debt. Tolving claimed $675 million in sales, their best year in 2011. Uh, then in 2012, the Tolving company stops reporting how much silver they have in stock. I believe they sold off most of their inventory. Okay, so there you can see there's the second issue. One was the delay and now not saying what's in stock. Sort of similar to the issue that Provident ran into there, selling something that wasn't in stock. And that can be just a simple mistake, but that can also turn into a long-term pattern of somebody who is basically robbing Peter to pay Paul, and that's apparently what happened to Tolving. Tolving no longer shows how many ounces of silver item are in stock. That's May 2012. July 1st, 2012, the Better Business Bureau complaints start coming in. He gets eight Better Business Bureau complaints between July 1st and 2000, uh, July 1st, 2012, and mid-December. He had zero in 10, 2010 too. So you can see that, the huge pickup in Better Business Bureau complaints. This is people that are buying stuff and not getting what they ordered or getting it uh, delayed. December 2012, one customer reports a two-week delay while another reports getting the order within 48 hours. So there's inconsistency there. June 2013, the company may have lost access to a line of credit. June 20th, a Tolving company pays their bankruptcy attorney the first installment for their bankruptcy. June 2013, a Tolving company may have mentioned their insolvency to third parties. Uh, September 2013, word starts getting out on the internet about major delays at the Tolving company after someone posts a $200,000 order that was five months overdue. Better Business Bureau complaints explode. You can see that. Uh, this is AG. He said, I realized that the Tolving Company had serious problems, started warning people. And then he goes into his explanation. He starts tracking the complaints, uh, starts a page about Tolving. Uh, any person who received metal or cash from Tolving Company on or after this date may be subject to bankruptcy preference, uh, a.k.a. clawback, and be required to return metal or cash. 
Um, and it's still it's still going. Local newspaper reports on someone that ordered tolling and did not receive their order, so now it's hitting local news about AG reports. It's a tipping point complaint volume exceeding order volume, meaning the end was near. Uh, let's see. March 3rd, 2014, about AG reported the Tulving Company shut down. Employees were sent home. Nobody was answering the phones or responding to email. Oddly, many people in the online forums refused to believe they were out of, visit, uh, out of business. Tulving Company visits their bankruptcy attorney to pay the second of the $10,000 installment. March 6th, local newspaper discovers that the Tulving Company shut down. March 6th, a class action lawsuit is filed. March 7th, a temporary restraining order is requested on behalf of the class action lawsuit. March 8th, the Secret Service raids the Tolving Company headquarters, seizing computers and coins. March 10th, the judge approves a temporary restraining order. So there's the history. So you can see there's one thing you would take away from that is there's no big, gigantic red flag that pops up, you know, that tells you, you know, there's trouble here, but there's just these nagging signs and the first are delays and complaints. Those are the first two that hit and then uh, the problems just kind of snowball from there. So I thought it was important to cover that. I encourage you to go to this About AG page and read up on it. There's a lot. I read you the list of the other like 100 that have gone through the same thing or similar things. So it's something to really keep an eye on. Again, my advice to Provident Metals. Uh, I still think they're above board and they're not really doing anything shady. I think they just put too much trust in the RCM and they got in trouble for doing so. My suggestion to them again would be to do exactly what Gainesville Coins is doing and make it very clear that they're selling something that they expect to receive but have not received it yet. Now I have received my two ounce goats from Gainesville at a fantastic price. Uh, my half ounce goats just shipped, which I got, I bought from Gainesville for $11. I bought them two weeks beforehand. They have shipped. So this seems to be a good system and one that uh, people are probably going to want to use going forward. So it's not a surprise that we're starting to see tightness. Uh, people are stepping up, they're buying a silver, and we know that uh, there just isn't enough silver in the world to go around at these prices. Um, at these prices, even 1% of the world's investment money would completely wipe out physical silver for years to come. Um, we'd need a correction up to the moon to get that thing back in line. And we'll talk to you next time.